Just keep track Drinks of and snacks. Now, we don't stop at a gas station for that, but like. I like just writing it down on paper. And um, we do. Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Missouri trip. This trip. And um, we go from there. Keep it so. It slides in here, and I keep it right at. Oops, sorry. <laughs> hey, I welcome keep it back to the channel. This is week number four on these five things. In case you're just joining us, this is Herky. Hanging with Herky fame. I'm Ed. I'm Nancy. And we have been road tripping for many years and been in our runaway camper for the past seven. Seven. But if you're new to this channel, you need to know that Herky thinks it's all about him. <laughs> Right? Uh, that's right. It is actually. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we spend most of our time doing. Everybody wants to meet him, not us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this week we're got five tips to save money on your road trip. So, uh, continuing on with our five things um, this week, we're going to talk about how to save money when you're on the road. Yes, and it can be done. We have when we travel, we usually spend. Uh, well, it used to be $100 a day. Well, when we started, $75, 75. a day, then $100. Um, our uh, three months on the road when we went to um, Alaska. Alaska, it was $180 a day, right? Yes, but you got to you gotta keep in mind. Well, that was the We gas. were paying $7, $8 a gallon for gas. Right. So I would say that uh, nowadays we're somewhere around the $100, $125 Right. range we're uh, back down uh, it's because of gas i know that that's road tripping now so i want to, I want to differentiate this if we were just driving to a campground local right. and staying here it would we be don't a, spend that a day we, we don't spend that <laughs> much money so no. uh, when you did the thing down in mississippi we didn't spend near that no no, no. Yeah. we just went to the campground. We, we cook our own meal <clears throat> right so anyway here we go we're gonna okay. launch into this number one Plan your eating out and your excursions ahead of time. So eating out and discourage, uh, excursions can be right. budget busters. Well, and we plan it ahead of time because when you get someplace, you're all hyped and you just want to do it all, right? So if you plan ahead of time, then you're like, mm -hmm. this is what we're doing. We have to stick with the plan and... Some Ed keeps us on a plan. <laughs> Some people are so strict, they're like, no eating out. Right. Not so now, we limit ourselves and we don't eat out much. But uh, we do, we enjoy, I mean, to us, part of road tripping and and traveling is experiencing... Is me climbing in the back of the van to make well, sandwiches or warm <laughs> stuff up in the microwave as we're driving down we the road. Also, but we also like to eat out. It, right. But it has to be like special. Right. So you, but you got to plan that. you got to plan ahead of time for so that. I mean, for instance, if you're in Alaska and you're in Homer and you don't eat seafood, why? You're, you're missing it. So, right. Yeah. The, uh, so we always make sure that we plan our eating out before beforehand so we're not tempted to just slide right. through and 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 get something and and go um the other thing is uh, excursions so it, i mean the theme there number one is excursions and eating out because mm -hmm. those are budget busters right right yeah if you just don't plan ahead i feel like you could just go nuts and mm -hmm. then your yeah, budget those are plan. areas your emotions can take right, over right. so Anyway. Okay, so number two kind of goes along with it. Make a budget before you leave, um, and and keep track of what you spend. And so I said, I kind of like because because I the way we work here is is uh, I go out and earn this money that we use on a on a you know, on our trip, mm -hmm. and I know exactly how much we got to spend. But Nancy's the one that keeps track of everything and right. helps us stay on the budget. So she's going to talk about right. that. So uh, back in this book, I started in 2020. So anyway, I just keep track of everything that is spent. Everything that is spent. Um, drinks and snacks. Now, we don't stop at a gas station for that, but like at Walmart or whatever like that. Um Gas. Every time right. we get gas. We Gift write shop. It. Walmart. Um, we write everything down. Yeah. And what we do is we kind of, 
have in our minds what we're going to spend that week. Right. So if one day, if we spend too much money one day, we know that the next day we need to tighten our belt up a little bit. Right. And I'm looking for like how I do the end of a trip. So some people, while she's looking at that, some people would say, oh, why don't you put that in a spreadsheet and all that? We've tried these electronic yeah. programs for, you know, with the apps and things like that. I've used uh, Fuely and, right. uh, and several of those. Honestly, we like just writing it down on paper. And, um, we do. It, it helps us out better. And also, we have records from years past. Um, so we can go back and see how much we spent on each road trip we right. run. So I found it. I found a sample. Okay. So uh, like this trip, we were gone 18 days and we spent a total of $2,162.04. So I just divided that by the 18 days and it was 120 day. And so we uh, keep track of the gas and, and then I total out each day that we go just Does it so. Does say where we were at? Uh, I, yes, this is the Northeast. So that was a road trip where we went up right. through the White Mountains and. Northeast. Uh, uh, we went up to uh, yes. Acadia. Yes. National Park and all that. So these are road trips, yes. not camping. And here I wrote the Beverly's address. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm trying to see like, here is um, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Missouri trip back in November of uh, 21. So I just label it, here's the Kansas trip, and um, we go from there. Keep it, so write down your budget. Just a small little, Yep. has a pen that slides in here, and I keep it right at, oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it right at my, right by my side of the, the van, by, by my feet, I have a like a little. I think you know, have a plan. You know, you, you yes, know what yes. your what your amount, your total amount's gonna be. Well, before we and leave, we say, okay, we really need to keep this at so mm -hmm. much a day. Mm -hmm. And and for my peace of mind, <laughs> this is just a little tip: is I always have enough money in in reserve to get us back home. If <laughs> we learned this uh, through COVID and things like that, it's like. I always have enough cash in reserve to and, get us back. And the van breaking yeah, down because we needed that cash. So then. anyway, we, yeah. we do that. So make a budget before you leave and keep track of what you spend is number two. Right. So, so number three is anticipate future needs. Um, that is like you don't want to have to stop at Walmart, right? Like every other day. So I keep under the bed uh, extra supplies. Let's just show them. You yeah, let's do that. Do that. Okay, yeah. come on, right, let's we go. go. We just came out to the garage where the camper is. So I can show you instead of telling you, give you a visual. I learned by visuals. So I have this, it's on wheels. I got this at Walmart. Anyway, um, that way it stays clean with this over the top. Um, well, come on. So we have extra toilet paper, extra paper towels, extra um, Clorox wipes here, toothbrushes, extra puppy pads, my tea bags, because you know I'm a tea snob, um, wet wipes that I keep in the car, Kleenexes, and then in here we have um, deodorant, toothpaste, shaving cream, just stuff that we just don't want to stop and get, you know, because like if you run out of toothpaste and you stop at Walmart just to get a toothpaste, you're gonna buy more than something else. So if we do it this way, we don't have to stop for just individual things. So it's worked for us, Ed seems to like it. So in the top drawer we have extra meds, uh, cold medicine, um, cortisone, all kinds of things. And we have antibiotics that our doctor, we have a really good doctor, and when we set out to travel that year, he gave us a prescription for antibiotic. Um, and it, I think it's the same medication that you would use for traveler's diarrhea. So anyway, we have that. I also keep my little packages of Kleenexes. I take extra Band-Aids, things like that, because 
there again, you don't know if you're going to get hurt or whatever. So just, I take this stuff with us because I don't want to have to stop at Walmart all the time to get stuff. Now, I love to stop, stop at Walmart, as you know, but not so much Ed. So I take stuff. We have NyQuil. I just keep stuff in here so we just can travel and not Okay, keep stuff. so there you go. That's what I do. And now in the van... Behind, like, um, we have a refrigerator and we have a freezer. So behind the freezer, when we're on very long trips, I put bags of Herky's dog food back there. because We he, have unopened full bags. Right, because he uses a certain brand. I forget the brand. Do you know it? Uh, Earthborn, Earthborn Holistic yeah. Dog Food. And I just get the small bags and I put... Uh, one will last him a month. So, like, when we went to... Uh, Alaska, we had three poked back in there. When we flew to Costa Rica, we took three with us. So Because, because it upsets the stomach if we change. And you don't want a dog with an upset stomach on a road traveling. trip. Traveling. No, you do not. You don't want to change dog food <clears throat> midstream. So in the van, we keep his um, heartworms, flea, extra dog food, um, uh, Pepto Bismol. No, no, uh, Tums. Tums. We have a thing of Tums for him because when his stomach does get upset, which we get, isn't we very break often. Up Tums down. Anyway, yeah, kind of. So that, as you can see, we think we we're just, thinking about things we're going to need ahead, so we don't have emergencies. Right. So anticipate right. future needs. That you know, you're in a mechanical vehicle. So right, right. Which oh, is yeah. hard to Your predict. Part, yes. but I do. I have a spare uh, distributor cap. I have belts, be, a spare serpentine belt. I have um, oil and transmission fluid. Uh, the other thing, washer fluid. Washer fluid. The thing I think about too is like when I'm planning out a trip is like, okay, if this is over 5,000 miles, I have to budget an oil change in there too. So, and, and we've had to do that. In Alaska, we did three. Three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus had ro tires rotated. <clears throat> so, so, yeah, you got you know, to think about that. So, yes. anticipate pay future needs, supplies, That's what oil, to say. Dog, anticipate. All kinds of stuff that yeah. you're going to need. Yeah, because you don't know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. that helps us stay going back to staying on budget. That helps us stay on a budget because right. we've already wrote that stuff in. Right. Yeah. Because, like I said, out in the, in the camper, you know, say Ed runs out of toothpaste in his shower bag. Well, we got to stop at Walmart. We're this way, you know, I just go into the bed and get what we mm -hmm. need. And, you know, it and lessens our it. stops. We yeah. replenish it at our leisure when we get back home. So or, it's not a budget buster. Well, when we were in Alaska, when we stopped to provision, I would always make a list. Oh, I used this. I used that. So I would add that to my list and I would get a roll of paper towels, some toilet paper, or whatever, if I had used it from under there, and then we put it back under there. So you can say that the key to anticipating future needs is being highly organized, and that's Nancy. <laughs> I love organization. Uh, number four. Yes, what is number four? Take your drinks and snacks with you. Gas station is expensive. expensive. Yeah. Very expensive. Mm -hmm. So I just... Um, I like Fresca, so I usually make sure I have a case of Fresca. That, in the that back. we buy at uh, Dollar General or someplace like that. Well, they don't carry Fresca. Okay, I get that at Walmart. Okay. But at Dollar General, I do get the big, huge jugs of water for drinking and for the ice maker. Mm -hmm. And so, and then with that being said, Ed likes these little doodads. Mm -hmm. And so we take these and he adds this to his water because he doesn't like to drink just water. I don't mind. Uh, but for a treat, like with a meal, I'll, I'll have a Fresca and he'll have a Coke every now and then. But mm -hmm. um, These drink packages are really, these uh, sachets that for drink mixes are really good. And they got all kinds of flavors. Right. And right. it doesn't take up as much space. So, right. As um, you can avoid the gas station trap. Uh, the same way about snacks, we we prefer those pretzels. Uh, so. We do. We get a bag of pretzels. Those stick, the stick, sticks. Stick and pretzels. yeah, when we're hungry or just need a snack, I just get that out and we just mm -hmm. snack on that until we're done and then we put it away. But um, So one of the things uh, that, because uh, you know, we're on these long extended road trips, is we have an ice maker. So we got one of those little Frigidaire tabletop ice makers. 
and we actually run that in the van off the inverter and uh, it works yeah. really good. Uh, I've seen other friends of ours that do the same thing just sitting in the back of their pickup truck. They got the ice maker going. so. It helps us avoid the Buy trap at the, at the uh, gas station. Right. Um, and I found that the jugs at Dollar General, I like those better than the ones at Walmart because they have a little handle, which are easier, and they're cheaper, baby, by like 30, 40 cents, I think. I the ice know. maker has to run filtered water right. otherwise it right. ruins the ice maker. And so we don't buy single servings of water because... Mm -hmm. Unless you're at Costco, that's pretty cheap. We'll get a case, but then that takes up room. So the big jugs, because in the van, I can pull out like the toilet and our, our other stuff and stick it back in there. And then as we need it, pull back and when get it. When we were in Alaska, it was very handy that there was a lot of artesian wells. Yeah, because so we would fill our We bottles. have a five gallon tank in the van and we have our bottles too. So. When we'd hit these natural artesian wells, I'd fill up everything. So, yeah, it's really so really in good. Alaska we did save our big jugs mm -hmm. and just refill them. Mm -hmm. So that was nice because you know what? There are no <clears throat> Dollar Generals in Alaska. So stay away from gas station yeah. snacks. Yeah. That is a yeah. budget bust. Because uh, you can buy a big old bag of chips for the price of a small snack bag. Mm -hmm. Although the snack bag is healthier for you, but pretzels. We, I like pretzels. We do, we do. <laughs> okay, yeah. number five. What is number five? Learning how to boondock. Oh, yeah. A lot of people are afraid of boondocking. So many people. We actually, at some later date, we we're talking about maybe doing these five things again, and we're going to have a whole subject on boondocking and the fears of boondocking and things like that. So you got to get over the fear of boondocking. Yes, yeah, some friends of ours are out west right now. And I said to her, okay, at least once you have to boondock and I want a picture of it because she is really, really afraid. And I said, no, Barb, you've got one time, either um, a uh, Bass Pro, a Cracker Barrel, a Walmart, mm -hmm. or even a casino out west. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just boondock, you're going to be fine. So the only type of protection that we travel with is our bear spray. Uh, I think we have a little thing of pepper spray hanging on the shelf. But I have to be honest with you, in all of our seven years of doing this, we've not had anybody knock on our door. Uh -uh. No. And we've only moved once, and that's because you just didn't like the spot. Is that correct? No, I've moved twice. Um, oh, we have? And okay. both times... I rode in the back of the camper. <laughs> both times it was... I stepped outside and just didn't like the surroundings uh trust yeah. your gut yeah trust your yeah. gut there yeah. was there was some things going on nothing illegal it's just i didn't like i didn't like the feeling Had and a bad really feeling. no so, danger no no, no. no. yeah just, he just he wasn't just, easy in his spirit so we moved. we moved and i was in my jammies and i said i'll just stay right here huh a mistake so you got to get comfortable with boondocking so yeah. how do you do that um freecampsites.net Mm -hmm. is, a, is a really good place to look. You can find a lot of city parks and mm -hmm. we've camped in city parks. We've camped at truck stops. We've, I say camp, we've, I don't want to use that word now. I want to back up. Uh, we have boondocked because don't at these places, camp. don't set up. That's very tacky and it's just really taking. Don't have your lawn chairs out yeah. and, and, and your <clears throat> fire pit. Yeah. No. So um, it's just a place to sleep for a few hours before we move on. So Bass Pro, Cracker Barrel, mm -hmm. Walmart, um, Nancy mentioned casinos. We've had good luck at casinos. Yeah, we've west. stayed in about three or four casinos mm -hmm. out west. Mm -hmm. Now, our favorite, or my favorite, I should say, is a Cracker Barrel because now we do, if we stay at a Cracker Barrel, we will either have supper there or we'll have breakfast there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's part of the planning you're eating out. So. Yes. Now, if we stay at a Walmart, then I try to provision why we're there. We try to spend a little money if we, if right. we stayed some right. nice place. Right, right. And then um, usually the Walmarts have a Murphy's gas station. So while he's filling up, I go in and provision. He comes and picks me up and we're on our way. Now, I want to be clear. Our main goal in boondocking is not that we're going to take a trip for three months and we're not going to spend a dime on camping. camping. Now, if you're on BLM land and stuff like that, which we've done, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. But getting to and from places, you know... 
we're not trying to be that tight. One thing is we have, or Nancy has a senior pass uh, for the, for the, um, for the recreation.gov. Right. And when I can stay at a forest service or something with like, electric, with electric for eight, $9. And well, in no Alaska, way. we were staying $6 yeah. a night. So, right. We take, yeah. take advantage of that. Right. So. He's cheap, but he's not that cheap. Yeah, I'd rather stop. I'd rather stay in a campground than a parking lot for that kind of money. Right. So anyway, learn how to boondock. It's a big savings. It is a big savings. Like when we go to Florida every year for that rally, we got a Cracker Barrel at a certain spot. We are a Bass Pro Shop, and we stop at those places. We catch six, seven hours sleep, and get we back get back road. on the road. Yeah. So. And that way we can just take our time because we don't have, oh, this is our reservation. We've got to be there. Mm -hmm. And if we're tired, so if it's 6.30, 7 o'clock and you're if tired. If you boondock and you save 50 bucks, then you can, as Nancy's talking about planning your budget, you can move that 50 bucks into the next day. See? Right, and right. And you've got some money. To... Or go in and have a breakfast at Cracker Barrel, yeah. Cracker Barrel or a dinner. Now, another thing we do is because I'm trying to watch my weight. So we share a meal, yeah. is what we do. Yeah. So. So if we go, if we're boondocking, going to Cracker Barrel, we share. We, we share the meal, so it's <laughs> more than enough for both of us. So. And if Ed's still hungry, I get the pretzels out. If I'm still hungry, I can make a peanut butter sandwich when we get back in the van. In the van, sure. <laughs> okay, that was these oh. uh, the, these five things. But our but we, we gotta have a, have a bonus. bonus. Yeah. So this is our bonus. So you know we. We take our own drinks and stuff. So before each trip, I go to Walmart and I get us a cup. These are just the um, Ozark. Ozark. Ozark Trail. Right. And you know the lids go bad on these, the rubber around it on the Ozark Trail. So I found another cheat way. I go like to um, Bass Pro Shop or Sportsman's, Sportsman's Warehouse. Warehouse and you can just get a... Yeti lid. Yeti lid, and it comes with a straw, and they're like five ninety nine, maybe. I don't know. The anyway, Yeti, the Yeti lids are better. <laughs> the Yeti lids are great. Um, well, when you first get the Ozark, they're good too, but they. The but anyway, back. anyway, back to sorry, rabbit trail. Um, so our our um, souvenirs are stickers. So we have this is our. We start off each trip with a blank. Cup. Right. So this is our. Uh, our 2022 cups so we started out like key west mm -hmm. uh hammond uh highland highland, highland hammocks highland yes hammocks. uh and then florida and then we went to badlands um here's so, the dempster highway right oh and here's the indiana dunes because uh, the car broke down, and so for my birthday, I wanted to be out west, southwest, so we went to Indiana Dunes to get my card, so there's a sticker from that. There's Denali. Pensacola, Florida, right. Valdez. So the cool thing about this, instead of t-shirts and things like that, now occasionally we do buy a t-shirt, but um, instead of t-shirts at every stop or just shot glasses or trinkets or something like that, right. we buy these cups, Right. and uh, especially when I was working, this was really cool for me because mm -hmm. I had this cup and I'd take my drink to work every day in it. I sit on my desk and I could look at all the stickers and just kind of rem reminisce about Although it. Although I have to show you, I don't know, you may have to zoom in, but Ed's from Idaho is so awesome. I only found one, so I let him have it, but it's a potato, baked potato, and the butter is in the shape of Idaho. <laughs> so cool stuff. Yeah. Number six, cup stickers. Yeah. Is uh, a yeah. Way, way so we go. get them for the back of the trailer and our cups. Yeah. So stickers are inexpensive mementos of a trip. Right. So. Now I do still buy some jewelry, but <laughs> those who know me know. Yeah. We know okay, so, that was these it. five things: uh, plan your eating out and your excursions. Right. Make a budget before you leave and, and stick keep to track it. of it. Yes. Keep track as yes. you go. Anticipate future needs. Hmm. Uh, stock up on stock stuff. Up on stuff. Yes, yeah. yes. And uh, when you're on your in your vehicle, think about things that you might need right. as far as mechanical things. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Number four. Take your drinks and, and snacks, snacks with, with you. you. Don't. Don't even buy your ice. Gas station. Right before we got the ice maker, <clears throat> like I would go in, 
and get us cups of ice, and then I'd be like, oh, but, yeah. and it adds so up. So take, yeah. take so your own drinks. That. Number five, learn how to boondock. It's a huge savings. It really is. And when, if you get a little bit behind on your budget, you could always boondock a couple nights and get caught back up. Right. Again, so. Yeah. And, and then number six. The bonus is hey, you buy I, stickers for a cup. I hope these have been helpful to everybody. Um, we've enjoyed doing them. It's been fun. It's been, at first I thought nobody would be interested in anything we got to say. But you seem to be. <laughs> but, but we've gotten really good feedback from our, yeah. these five things. So, all righty. Stay tuned. Next Sunday, we'll have our last week of these five things. The last week in this series. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, hope you guys enjoy it. And Herky is still with us. He's yeah. just down here on the floor. So, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you later. Bye now.